I've had a bunch of requests to test folding utility knives. I've got a bunch of different brands of tests, so let's see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see how much force it takes to open and close the knives. Then we'll see which of the knives does the best job securing the blades. Then we'll test the failure load for each of the knife locks. Finally, we'll see which of the knives can handle an impact. At a price of $15 for two knives, or $7.50 each, is this Black & Decker brand. Includes a stainless steel belt clip. The knife does not have a lock to keep the knife secured in the closed position, but it does have a liner lock to keep it secured in the open position. To change the blade, press down on the blade release button and remove the blade. I'm weighing all the knives with all the blades removed. And the Black & Decker weighs 87.1 grams. In the first test, let's measure the amount of force it takes to open the knives. And it takes close to 200 grams or about a half a pound of pressure to open the knife. From the midpoint to the fully open position, the Black & Decker is very easy to extend at 38 grams. I'll be testing two different DeWalt utility knives. The first one costs $11 and it does not fold. You can store up to five blades in the handle. Includes a comfortable thumb pad. Rapid load blade change. Includes a twine cutter. The DeWalt is very heavy at 222 grams. Also at a price of $11, the same price as the DeWalt is this Gerber EAB Lite. The blade is secured open with a liner lock. Sporty stainless steel handle also doubles as a pocket or money clip. To change out the blade, you have to remove the blade retention screw. Uses contractor grade or standard size utility blades. The Gerber is extremely light at only 60.3 grams. The Gerber is quite a bit stiffer to open at very close to 300 grams or two thirds of a pound. From the midpoint, it takes about 90 grams to open the knife. At a price of $12 is this Husky brand. While the knife doesn't have a lock to keep the knife locked in the closed position, it does have a lock back to keep the knife secure in the open position. To change the blade, press the blade release button and then rotate the blade cover to the open position. And the Husky weighs 114 grams. And the Husky takes about twice the force to open compared to the Gerber and the Black & Decker at 590 grams. From the midpoint, it's pretty stiff at 238 grams. At a price of $12 is this Crescent Whis. If you're looking for a utility knife that won't accidentally open, the Crescent stays securely locked in the closed position. To extend the blade, you have to slide the blade release button towards the back of the knife while extending the blade. The button does seem to get stuck at times, making it difficult to open the knife. However, the blade changes is very easy with a pretty large button that slides towards the base of the knife pretty easily. The crescent holds two blades in the handle, and the crescent weighs 184 grams. Once the knife is unlocked, the crescent takes the least amount of force yet at only 148 grams, 87 grams from the midpoint. At a price of $12 is this Stanley Fat Max. Folds for safe and convenient storage. With the Stanley Fat Max, you can actually hold two blades at once. To fold the knife, you simply press the release button. Three steps to change the blade. Push the slider forward. Push the lever towards the blade to be changed. Pull the blade out of the knife while holding the lever. The Stanley Fat Max weighs 195.8 grams. And the Stanley Fat Max is about the same as the Gerber at 312 grams. It's actually not too bad from the midpoint to the fully open position at 53 grams. At a price of $12 is this Craftsman brand. It includes a compact folding design. The spring assist really helps with opening the knife. The Craftsman uses a liner lock. The Craftsman can store up the two blades inside the handle. To change the blade, you have to extend the slider. Push and hold the blade change button and pull out the blade. The Craftsman weighs 132.2 grams. The Craftsman only takes 140 grams, which is about the same as the Crescent. However, it is pretty stiff from the midpoint at 189 grams, which makes opening the knife with just one hand pretty challenging. At a price of $13 is this Milwaukee brand. Features a press and flip mechanism for easy one-handed opening. Includes a wire stripper and a gut hook. Just press the button to fold the knife. The Milwaukee has a metal extension over the blade release button to prevent accidental blade releases, but it makes it difficult to access the button to release the blade. The Milwaukee is very light at only 111.3 grams. The Milwaukee locks in both the closed and the open position. And it takes very little force to open the Milwaukee at 28 grams. From the midpoint, it only takes 86 grams of pressure. At a price of $13 is this Irwin brand. Can store up the two additional blades. Wire stripper for built-in convenience. The knife does not have a lock to keep the knife secured in the closed position, but it does have a liner lock to secure the knife in the open position. To change the blade, the knife has to be in the partially folded position. Then press the blade release button and remove the blade. And the Irwin weighs 126.1 grams. And the Irwin takes quite a bit more effort to open than the Milwaukee at 289 grams. And it's also pretty stiff from the midpoint at 298 grams. At a price of $14 is this Cat brand. Quick one-handed operation using a built-in thumb stud. Locking liner keeps the blade securely open during use. To change the blade, press down on the blade release button and remove the blade. The Cat weighs 137.6 grams. At 450 grams, the Cat requires quite a bit of thumb pressure to open with just one hand. From the midpoint, it takes even more pressure at 498 grams. At a price of $14 is this Fiskars Pro. One-handed flip open design allows the knife to open with the flick of a wrist. With the Fiskars, the knife will remain locked and until the button is pushed. Push the button to release the knife and allow it to fold. Push in the button and slide the blade lock into the open position. Remove the old blade and install a new one and press the blade lock closed. The Fiskars Pro weighs 154.7 grams. Once the knife is unlocked, the Fiskars is the easiest to open yet at only 8 grams. From the midpoint, it's done the best yet at only 43 grams. At a price of $16 is this Cobalt brand. 
To secure the blade in the open position, the Cobalt uses a lockback. The Cobalt's blade release lever is located on both sides of the knife and allows for use of two digits for blade changes. The Cobalt weighs 133 grams, and a Cobalt, which uses a lockback, takes by far the most force to open at 786 grams. It's also pretty stiff from the midpoint at 214 grams. At a price of $17 is a Sheffield brand. Lockback designed with aluminum and wood handle. Opening the Sheffield is definitely a two-hand operation. To change the blade, rotate the blade release lever to the unlock position and then slide the blade cover into the open position. I found that I had to hold the blade cover firmly or else it moved away from the knife when I placed the blade release lever in the home position. The Sheffield weighs 176.3 grams. The Sheffield also has a lock back and it's almost as stiff as the Cobalt at 693 grams. From the midpoint, it takes even more effort than the Cobalt at 329 grams. We'll be testing two utility knives made by Klein Tools. The first one costs $18. The Klein Tools utility knife locks in both the closed and the open position. The Klein Tools is pretty light at 117 grams. With the blade in the unlocked position, the Klein Tools partially opens itself with the help of gravity. From the midpoint, it's pretty smooth, but peaks at 108 grams just as the knife fully opens. At a price of $20 is the second DeWalt utility knife that we'll be testing. Unlike the other DeWalt knife, this one not only retracts the blade, but it also folds to make it more compact when not in use. It claims to offer three times the blade retention strength. Stores up the three blades in the handle. The DeWalt has a liner lock. The DeWalt is extremely stiff and it's definitely a two-hand operation to deploy the knife. To change the blade, press the blade release towards the bottom of the knife. And the DeWalt weighs 197.3 grams. Even with the liner lock, the DeWalt is very stiff at 741 grams. From the midpoint, the DeWalt takes even more force at just over 1,200 grams or very close to 2.5 pounds of pressure. And the second Klein Tools utility knife is the most expensive one we'll be testing and costs right at $22. Both Klein Tools are folding knives, but this one has a retractable blade. The Klein Tools is secured open by a lockback. The blade has to be in the retracted position for the Klein Tools to close. To open the blade storage compartment, move the slide lever to the forward position and flip the compartment open using the thumb tab. The blade release button is very easy to access. Once the blade is removed, you can manually load a blade or allow the knife to load one of the three stored blades from the handle. To do this, retract the blade lever and then extend it again. What a great feature, especially if you're wearing gloves. The Klein Tools weighs 199.6 grams. The Klein Tools takes 530 grams, not bad for a lockback knife. From the midpoint, 189 grams is still pretty good for a lockback knife. If you're looking for a knife that's easy to open, the top three knives all have button locks securing them in the closed position. The Fiskers came out on top at only 43 grams. Milwaukee also did very well at 86, and the least expensive of the two Klein knives, 108 grams. If you're looking for an everyday carry, the weight of the knife might be a factor. And the Gerber is very light at just over 60 grams. The Black & Decker only weighs 87.1, Milwaukee 111.3, Husky 114, and Klein Tools 117 grams. Let's see how much force it takes to change the blades. The Black & Decker has a small metal button and it takes almost a pound of force to release the blade. That's a pretty easy blade change. And the DeWalt has a pretty small button and it takes more than three times the force compared to the Black & Decker at three pounds. While it doesn't take much effort to remove the screw from the Gerber, it would be very easy to lose the screw. The Husky's blade release is pretty small and it slides towards the knife handle. And the Husky is pretty easy on the fingertips at only a quarter pound. Even though the blade release on the Crescent is recessed, it's pretty large and easy to work with at one third of a pound. And the Stanley Fat Max is pretty hard on the fingertips at 4.2 pounds, the most force yet. That's quite a bit of force for a pretty small pointed button. While the Craftsman button is soft and won't inflict a sharp pain, it takes about seven pounds of force on a tiny squishy button to remove the blade. Pretty much impossible if you're wearing gloves. The Milwaukee has a small metal extension over the blade release button for safety reasons. So applying two pounds of force on a button that's difficult to access is a bit of a challenge. And the Irwin also has a metal extension over the blade release and it takes even more pressure than the Milwaukee at just over three pounds. Without a metal extension getting in the way of the button, the blade changes are a lot easier with the cat compared to the Milwaukee and the Irwin at only 1.8 pounds of pressure. While the Fiskers takes two and a half pounds of pressure, the button is pretty large and flat, which really helps. The blade release on the Cobalt is large and easy to access, so two and a quarter pounds of pressure is pretty easy for a blade change. The blade release on the Sheffield is pretty easy to grip, but 3.7 pounds is quite a bit of force. The Klein Tools button has to be in a recessed position to release the blade. 1.15 pounds isn't too much pressure, but finger positioning is the key. The DeWalt blade release is pretty easy to access and it takes just over two and a half pounds of pressure. And the blade release button on the Klein Tools with the retractable blade is very easy to access. It takes a very light touch with just over a half pound of pressure to release the blade. Let's see how much effort it takes to unlock the knife when it's time to put the knife away. And the Black & Decker's liner lock takes 4.38 pounds of pressure and has a pretty uncomfortable design. The Gerber knife might be small, the liner lock takes quite a bit of pressure at four and a half pounds. Lockbacks typically take quite a bit of pressure and the Husky takes nine and a half pounds of pressure. The Crescent that I'm testing tends to get stuck at times. When it's not jammed, it takes 4.2 pounds to slide into the unlock position. And the Stanley Fat Max uses a button to unlock the blade that's very easy on the fingers and takes less than three pounds of pressure. 
The Craftsman's liner lock is pretty hard on the fingers at just over 6 pounds of pressure. That's the most pressure yet for the knives with liner locks. The Milwaukee and the Crescent both have a button to unlock the blade, and the Milwaukee performed almost the same at 4.88 pounds. And the Irwin's liner lock is very easy on the fingers at just over 2 pounds. The Cat took almost 5 pounds of pressure to release the liner lock, which is about a pound less than the Craftsman. The Fiskers uses a button to unlock the blade, and it only takes 3.2 pounds of pressure, which is very close to the same as the Stanley Fat Max. The Cobalt has a lock back, and it takes the most force yet at 12.4 pounds. The Sheffield also has a lock back, and it takes almost as much force as the Cobalt at 11.3 pounds. And the Klein Tools is very easy on the fingers at only 2.23 pounds to unlock the knife. The DeWalt and the Cat both have liner locks, and it takes about the same amount of pressure at just over 5 pounds. Of all the knives with the lock back, the Klein takes the least amount of force at 7.7 .7 pounds. It also has the most surface area, making it the easiest on the fingers. A pound of pressure on a liner lock digs into the fingers a lot more than a button. So taking that into consideration, the Klein Tools only takes 2.23 pounds of pressure on a button. The Irwin's liner lock takes 2.29 pounds. The Stanley Fat Max and the Fiskers both use a button, and they take very close to 3 pounds of pressure. Up next, let's compare the five knives with retractable blades. And the Dewalt takes 4.3 pounds of pressure to reposition the blade. And the Stanley Fat Max seems to get stuck in the open position and it takes almost 25 pounds of force to retract the blade. The Craftsman is almost the same as the Dewalt at 4 pounds. And the folding Dewalt utility knife is very well designed at just over a pound of force. And the Klein Tools only takes 0.89 pounds, the least amount of force yet. So the Klein Tools and the Dewalt make the blade deployment process very easy at around a pound of force. The less expensive the Craftsman and the non-folding DeWalt require around 4 pounds of force. Before doing some testing that causes damage to the knives, let's first compare the comfort of the knives using 10 pounds of force. This is a highly subjective comparison, but I believe you'll find the information helpful. There just isn't a good place to apply thumb pressure, and the handle and the belt clip have some sharp edges that cut into the hand. On a 1 to 5 scale with one being very comfortable, I'd give the Black & Decker a rating of 4. The DeWalt is very well designed for comfort with no sharp edges and a rubber grip. There's also a rubber pad for applying thumb pressure. This one's going to be very hard to beat with the best possible rating of 1. The selling point for the Gerber is the compact size, and that comes at a cost for comfort. Unfortunately, it's very uncomfortable to use with a lot of sharp edges. I'd give the Gerber a rating of 4.5. Just like the Black & Decker, the Husky has some pretty sharp lines, including a sharp belt clip. However, it is a little bit more comfortable than the Black & Decker, so I'd give it a rating of 3. And the Crescent brand is almost as comfortable as the DeWalt. It's molded to fit nicely into the hand, and there aren't any sharp edges, so I'd give it a 2. Unfortunately, the Stanley Fat Max isn't too comfortable to use. The handle seems far too wide and it cuts into the hand, so I'd give the Stanley Fat Max a rating of 3.5. The bottom part of the Craftsman and the belt clip cuts into the hand, but it is more comfortable to use compared to the Stanley Fat Max, so I'd give it a rating of 3. And Milwaukee's done a great job designing the knife. It's very light, no sharp edges on the knife, and the belt clip doesn't cut into the hand. So I'd give the Milwaukee a rating of 2, the same as the Crescent. The liner lock on the Irwin sticks out and really cuts into the hand. The belt clip also has some pretty sharp edges, so I'd give the Irwin a 3. The Cat's done a pretty good job designing this knife. There aren't any sharp edges cutting into the hand, and the rubber pad for applying thumb pressure is well placed, so I'd give the Cat a rating of 2. The team that designed the Fiskers must spend a lot of time using utility knives because they've done a great job. And it's very comfortable to use without any sharp edges. Even the belt clip is tucked away to avoid causing discomfort. So I'd give the Fiskers the best possible rating of 1. The Cobalt does have some sharp edges including the belt clip. So I'd give the Cobalt a 3. The Sheffield is a very good looking knife but unfortunately it's just not very comfortable to use with some sharp edges all the way around the knife. So I'd give it a 3.5. While the Klein Tools does fit nicely into the hand, the belt clip along with some sharp edges do cut into the hand making it a little bit uncomfortable. So I'd give it a rating of 3. While the top side of the handle on the DeWalt is very comfortable, the belt clip and the bottom side of the handle have some very sharp edges. So I'd give the DeWalt a rating of 3. The bottom side of the Klein Tools handle and the belt clip have some pretty sharp edges, just like the DeWalt. So I'd give it a rating of 3. Rating user comfort is highly subjective. With that in mind, the DeWalt that doesn't fold and the Fiskers receive the highest possible rating of 1. The Crescent, Milwaukee, and the Cat also received very good ratings of 2. Some of the knives hold blades securely while others allow a lot of movement. With the new blade secured in the vise, I used the dial indicator to measure the up and down movement of the handle at 3.5 inches from the vise. And the Gerber's blade is secured by a screw and doesn't allow any movement. The Sheffield also performed very well at 0.03 inches and the Cat 0.04. Irwin, Husky, Fiskers, and Klein tools without the retractable blade were right at 0.05 inches. For the most part, knives with retractable blades have far more blade movement than those without retractable blades. I've had utility knife blades fall out while the knife was in use. So let's go ahead and test that next. The half of the blade that's inside the knife is still in new condition to ensure a proper fit. I've dulled the other half of the blade that's outside the knife for safety reasons. I've attached 25 pounds of weight at the end of the blade to see if the knife has enough strength to hold onto the blade. And the Black & Decker held onto the blade just fine. And things are going very well for the utility blades throughout the testing. I thought that all the knives were going to ace this test until I got to the final knife 
with the Klein tools with the retractable blade. Unfortunately, the Klein tools couldn't hold on to the blade. Giving the blade a slight tug while moving the blade around caused the blade to come out. So all the knives pass this test but the Klein tools. Let's test the failure load of the knife locks next. I'll apply force to the top of each of the knives until the knife lock breaks or releases. The Black & Decker has a liner lock and the liner lock gave up at 48 pounds. The lock is now badly bent. And the very compact Gerber performed a little bit better than the Black & Decker at 51 pounds. Just like the Black & Decker, the liner lock is bent and the knife is now jammed in the open position. And the Crescent brand made it to 71 pounds briefly before making a very bad sound. And the Crescent's lock will no longer hold the knife in the open position. And the lockback design of the Husky is proven to be far stronger than the liner locks, making it to 205 pounds. When the knife let go, the lockback became detached from the knife. And the button lock on the Stanley Fat Max made it to 95 pounds before the top of the knife experienced a blowout. Unfortunately, the knife lock experienced catastrophic failure. The Craftsman's liner lock gave up a lot sooner than expected at only 31 pounds. Unfortunately, it experienced a pretty bad bend. The Milwaukee has a button lock and it performed very well for this style of lock at 184 pounds to move into second place behind the Crescent. And the lock on the Milwaukee still works just fine, but the lock did experience a lot of wear and tear. And the Irwin almost matched the performance of the Milwaukee at 183 pounds before the lock gave up. And the liner lock is badly bent. Just like the Irwin, the Cat has a liner lock. And the Cat made it to 174 pounds before giving up. And the liner lock actually broke. And the Fiskers moves into the lead at a very impressive 236 pounds. And the bottom of the knife experienced a pressure sore, but the lock still works. And the Cobalt has a lock back securing the knife. And the Cobalt made it to 179 pounds before fading and finally breaking. The rivet holding the lock back is broken. The Sheffield has a lock back and it made it to 176 pounds when suddenly things went from happy to snappy. And the rivet holding the lock back sheared. And the Klein tools folded under the pressure of 118 pounds. And the button lock still works even after being forced to close. And the DeWalt has a liner lock and it performed well making it to 155 pounds before letting go. And the liner lock is badly bent. The Klein tools auto has a lock back. And the lock back became unlocked at 155 pounds the same as the DeWalt. And the lock still functions properly after being forced to close. And the Fiskers came out on top at 236 pounds pounds and the lock continued to function after the test. The Husky finished in second at 205 pounds, Milwaukee 184, Irwin 183, and Cobalt 179 pounds. Let's compare the belt clips next. And the Black & Decker took a little bit of effort to fasten to the belt. The Black & Decker needs a little bit more of a bend on the hook for an easier start. And the Gerber's belt clip is very well designed and easy to fasten to the belt. And the Husky is also very well designed for easy use. And the Crescent just doesn't have enough of a hook to allow the leading edge of the belt clip to glide over the belt. Just like the Crescent, the Stanley Fat Max needs a little bit more of a hook on the belt clip. And the Craftsman is very well designed and easy to attach to the belt. And the Milwaukee needs a little bit more of a hook or a bend on the belt clip. It takes a little bit more effort than some of the other brands to fasten to the belt. And the Irwin is very easy to attach to a belt. Very well designed. Just like the Irwin, the Cat has a very well designed belt clip. The belt clip on the Fisker seems to be designed for hand comfort when the knife is in use. So there's just not enough of a hook on the belt clip for an easy start. The Cobalt has plenty of hook on the belt and is well designed. Just like the Cobalt, the Sheffield has a very well designed belt clip. And the Klein Tools just doesn't have enough hook on the belt clip and it takes some effort to fasten to the belt. The DeWalt seems a little bit better designed than the Klein Tools, but it's not as easy to fasten to the belt clip as some of the other brands. And the Klein Tools Auto takes even more effort than the less expensive Klein Tools. The belt clip on this one has less of a hook. While rating belt hook performance is subjective, about half the brands receive the best possible rating of one for ease of use attaching to a belt. I also compared the holding strength of the belt clips once fastened to a belt. And the Fiskers came out on top at 7.8 pounds. The Sheffield also performed well at 7.4, Milwaukee Inclined Tools, 7 pounds. I also tested the lateral strength of the knives before the lock strength test. I placed 25 pounds on the side of each knife and they held up just fine. Let's drop a 70 pound rubber tie from 12 inches onto the knives to see how they hold up. And the Black & Decker experienced a lot of damage and there's no way that this knife is going to close. And the handle on the DeWalt experienced some damage but the blade still retracts and extends just fine. While the Gerber experienced some damage, it definitely held up better than the Black & Decker. And the Crescent experienced just as much damage as the Black & Decker. And the Husky doesn't look too bad but the knife is stuck in the open position. And the Stanley Fat Max doesn't look too bad but neither of the blades retracts or extends. And the Craftsman held up really well, the blade still retracts and extends. I can't close the knife since the liner lock is damaged from the previous test. And the Milwaukee knife doesn't look too bad but it's bent and stuck in the open position. And the Irwin experienced less damage than most of the other brands. The bent liner lock from the previous test is preventing the knife from closing. And the cat compressed a little bit from the impact but once the weight was removed the knife moved freely. And the cat held up a lot better than average. And the blow from the railroad tie broke the belt clip and bent the frame on the Fiskers. The knife no longer folds. And the railroad tie dealt a fatal blow to the Cobalt. It's badly bent and no longer folds. And the Sheffield 
didn't seem to notice the minor tap from the railroad tie. And a Sheffield is still as good as new. And the frame of the Klein tools has a small bend and the knife no longer folds. The DeWalt doesn't look too bad, but the blade no longer retracts or extends. And the railroad tie put a small wrinkle in the Klein tools, but it still folds with some effort. The blade still retracts and extends just fine. If blade storage is a factor that's important to you, the DeWalt without a folding handle holds five spare blades. The DeWalt with the folding handle and the Klein tools auto holds three. The Crescent, Craftsman, and the Irwin hold two spare blades. So which knife is the best? If one does include the subjective categories of comfort, blade change, and belt clip ratings, the Fiskers came out on top with an average finish of 2.8. Milwaukee finished in second with an average finish of fourth place. Klein Tools without the auto feature, 4.5. However, if we throw out those three subjective categories, the order and the placement of the top three stays the same. If I could only choose one utility knife, I would definitely go with the Fiskers. It's very well designed. I also like the Milwaukee knife quite a bit. It too is very comfortable and well designed. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.